Hi LEGO fans, it's Collectible Minifigure Blind Bag Feeling Time again! This time we have a fantastic collection of 16 DC Superheroes minifigures to find. Today I'm going to be feeling out, unbagging and reviewing a complete set of 16 LEGO DC Superheroes minifigure blind bags. I'll also be teaching you my system for getting a complete set of DC minifigures with no duplicates, no disappointment and no wasted money because... Holy price hike, Batman! Feeling what's inside these DC minifigure blind bags just got a whole lot more important. LEGO just raised the price from $3.99 to $4.99 per bag. That's a 25% hike in price. Interestingly, over in the UK, the price rise was 50 pence or 17%. And just to add insult to injury, there is zero change on price in the Eurozone. My spidey sense, sorry wrong comic, tells me LEGO may be testing price elasticity. But you didn't come here for an economics lesson. So at least in the United States, a complete set of DC minifigures is going to set you back 80 bucks, and that's if you manage not to get any duplicates. Thankfully, I'm here to show you how to beat the system. Each one of these little black packets of joy contains one mystery minifigure. There's no way to tell what's inside other than feeling their bag. People talk about bump codes and all kinds of mumbo jumbo, but feeling is the best system. Inside each one of these retail boxes, you'll find 60 blind bags. That means each one of these boxes has a retail value of $240. Holy markup, Lego! The 16 character lineup includes some familiar and some not so familiar characters from the DC Superheroes lineup. The full set of 16 includes Mr. Miracle, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Stargirl, Sinestro, The Cheetah, Superman, Green Lantern, Cyborg, Batman, Huntress, Metamorpho, The Joker, Bumblebee, The Flash, and Batmite, whoever that might be. Also new for 2020, we get a brand new element which enables you to pose many of these characters in a new dynamic superhero pose. Before we commence our journey of discovery, here's a really quick guide to feeling LEGO minifigure blind bags. The most important thing about blind bag feeling is to be prepared. Inside each bag is an insert that shows you all 16 characters. If you don't have one of those, a quick Google search will help you find one you can print out to get ahead of the game. Because comic book characters are so unique, each one will usually have one or more accessories which will uniquely identify the character. You can feel these accessories out through the bag and that's exactly what we'll be doing today. I'm going to work through the entire box of 60 feeling out each character. I'll edit out the duplicates because that's just boring. We'll then open up the bag to confirm the dark art of minifigure blind bag feeling and then we'll take a detailed look at each of the minifigures. To make this video super easy to follow, I'll be showing the blind bags in the order they appear on the insert inside the bag. If you need to know how to feel out a specific character, check the video description and you'll find a helpful index with all of the video timestamps. With all of that covered, let's start feeling out all 16 of the 2020 DC Superheroes minifigure blind bags. Okay, so what we have here is a fairly light and thin bag. Let's have a feel around. Immediately I can feel the base plate there with the four studs. Let's see what else we can find. Um, oh, that's interesting. So we've got a stud here. Now a few of them do have these studs, I think. Uh, but this one actually has a chain attached to it. Now that does narrow it down to two characters. We've got Mr. Miracle and also Cyborg who have one of these Lego chains. But I think the Mr. Miracle chain is actually longer. Let's see what else we can find in here. Now if it is Mr. Miracle, we should have a pair of handcuffs. So let's see if we can find those. I think the chain did feel quite long, but it's always good to confirm ideas with other items. and. Yeah, okay, so yep, yeah, those are the handcuffs, you can feel them, they've got uh, little clips in there for the hands, and then they are springy, so this is definitely going to be Mr. Miracle, I'm going to make sure we don't snip anything inside the bag, because I think he does have a really nice green cape, and I don't want to slice it, so let's have a look, we should see some red and green come out of the bag, and yep, yeah, there's a green cape, and yep, yeah, we've got a load of red stuff, yep, yeah, here we go, let's get him built and take a look. So this is number one from the collection of DC Superheroes collectible minifigures. This is Mr. Miracle aka Scott Free who first appeared in April 1971 and was created by Jack Kirby. One of his key abilities is escapology, hence the large chain and also the handcuffs. The chain is a really nice Lego element, good to feel out in the bag and wraps twice around Mr. Miracle. 
With the chains removed, you can see the handcuffs binding Mr. Miracle's wrists and some of that epic printing. The torso print is absolutely stunning and contrasts against the green cape. The vibrant green and gold printing continues down onto the legs, and the effect is made extra vibrant with the green and red dual molded legs and some really crisp side printing. Viewed from the back, we have more of that crisp printing, and it really does show off the dual molded arms and legs. No side printing on the arms, but we do have an explosion of colour with red, yellow and green. There's only one facial expression, but I love the kind of sheepish look on Mr Miracle's face. I also really like the two-part cape with the piece that sits behind the head. The two-part cape is made of the more papery material, but that does give it a stiffness that enables it to stand up behind Mr Miracle's head. He's a great minifigure with some cool accessories and a great start to the collection. So this one is uh, moderately thick. There are some thick elements in there, so let's have a, a feel around. Um, that feels like hair. It feels like he's got long hair at the back, so that's interesting. So yeah, we could have a long-haired character. We've got a base plate. See what else we can find. I don't know what that is. That might be the little element that helps you put it in the dynamic pose. Um, I'm looking, oh, there we go. There's something distinctive. So yeah, what we've got here, is actually quite flexible and it feels round. Um, now that could only be one accessory from uh, studying these minifigures and that is going to be the Lasso of Truth I think from Wonder Woman. I think we do have the original styled Wonder Woman. I'm going to feel down here, make sure we've got nothing in the way. We don't want to clip any capes and let's see, this should be Wonder Woman. So hang on first, there we go, that is the element you're going to be feeling for, that is the Lasso of Truth or the Lasso of Truth as we would call it in the UK and hopefully we have Wonder Woman, uh, come on, oh, it's stuck, oh in fact, <laughs> he's literally stuck inside the bag, they must have uh, sealed Wonder Woman in, so I think we're going to have to literally destroy this. Um, let's, let's see if we can snip the inner bag here and pour out the accessories. Yeah, the inner bag is actually sealed into the outer bag. So, there we go. Yeah, so this is Wonder Woman. Now, the other thing you can feel for with Wonder Woman is this magnificent cape piece, which is um, not a cape, but a skirt. And it's um, it's blue, as you can see here, with the stars on, but it's very rigid, uh, very easy to feel out inside the bag. So we've got the, the skirt, which is good to feel for, and also the lasso of truth. So this is the fantastic Wonder Woman who first appeared in DC Comics in 1941. I believe this costume is meant to represent the earliest incarnation of that character. She does come with one accessory, the Lasso of Truth. It's a kind of squishy plastic in this pearlescent gold colour. Given its very distinctive appearance, I'm pretty sure the Lasso of Truth is a brand new element. I can't think of any other use for it apart from an extreme minifigure bubble blowing wand. This is most definitely not the first Wonder Woman minifigure. In fact, I think there's about seven previous minifigures, at least two mini dolls, and a Duplo version. Wonder Woman is very popular. Starting at the top, Wonder Woman has a bit of a muted expression, and then this fantastic hair and tiara combo. We do have a secondary expression which shows a little bit more Amazonian guile. The hair is a really nice element, it looks great in this black colour, and I love the way it reflects light. Like Mr. Miracle, Diana, aka Wonder Woman, also has dual molded legs. A little bit of flesh coloured printing and some details really help to mask the contrast between the two colours. Certainly on this minifigure, the printing is a little bit rough, but we do have Wonder Woman's boots and also those blue hot pants with white stars. On top of those, you'll find a matching skirt element with the same blue and white stars. It's a rigid piece which makes it really easy to feel out in the bag. The torso print represents an earlier version of Wonder Woman with the gold eagle on the chest. My only criticism here would be the flesh printing around the top of the bodice. There's so much red you can't really tell it's meant to be skin tone. Lego opted for flesh coloured arms so we don't have any dual moulding, but we do have dual printing for the metallic bracelets. Around the back of the minifigure we do have some more printing, exposing those flesh coloured muscly shoulders and that impossibly cinched waist. Although this may not be the first LEGO Wonder Woman, it is a fantastic minifigure and a great addition to the collection. 
Next we have a fairly lightweight, another fairly thin package, and let's see what we can find in here. So we've got a, yeah, torso piece there, I think. Uh, that's gonna be a head. We've got a base plate with the bumps on, and there's gotta be something distinctive in here. So we've got some legs. Always check the legs to see if they bend, uh, because there is one character in here, uh, Batmite, which has the tiny little legs which don't bend. Now that is a hair piece. You can feel it's, it's long. Um, there's a cutout in front there for the minifigure's head to poke through. Um, but there must be something distinctive in here, so let's see what we can find. Uh, that's the dynamic pose piece. Um, it's got to be something good. That's a jumper plate. They all have those. Okay, so I found what I'm looking for. Um, yeah, we've got a very distinctive element here. This is a fish. Now you might remember these from the Ninjago movie. There were a lot of these with the shark army, but we have a fish element, which I believe comes in a brand new color. And this is gonna be Aquaman. You can tell by the fish element and the long hair. So let's uh, reach for the scissors and we'll open this up and check that we've felt it out correctly. So what have we got in here? I'm hoping to see a fish. Okay, uh, yeah, still bits in there. So yeah, here we go. This is the fish element, which is probably the easiest way of feeling out Aquaman. And look at it in that fantastic green color. I believe that is a new and exclusive color. And then we also have this long hair piece, which is uh, of course kind of blonde and flowing as we'd expect from Aquaman. So yeah, very cool. Let's get this built and take a closer look at Aquaman. Arthur Curry, AKA Aquaman has appeared in minifigure form about five times before. He's become very popular recently, so it's no surprise to see him included in this selection. We do have an accessory in the form of this fish element. The mold is nothing new, but that color certainly is. Another unusual feature is the golden harpoon, which replaces Aquaman's left hand. Actually, when you're feeling inside the bag, this can be particularly useful. Aquaman, for some reason, is the only torso with a harpoon for a hand. The other arm comes in gray with metallic silver printing that looks like scales. The torso print is fantastic and comes with abs which makes me feel inferior. In particular here, I love the gold and silver metallic detail. We also have a scaly green print which continues from the torso onto the legs and also onto the hips. Again, Lego is using dual molded legs to really enhance the vibrancy of those colors. To me, the facial expression is one of the weaker points. It just doesn't quite look as crisp as the rest of the printing. In fact, I prefer the more aggressive expression on the back of the head. We also have some printing on the back of the body, which gives us a closer look at the metallic silver seashell. Aquaman's hair is particularly vibrant in this very bright yellow color. He has long blonde locks, which flow halfway down his back and also over the shoulders and onto the chest. Aquaman is a very cool minifigure, but I'm just not sure he's gonna be my favorite from the collection. Well, I just found a couple of duplicates, which I'll edit out and uh, let's see what we've got here. So yeah, fairly uh, thick package this time. I can feel the uh, leaflet inside the bag. Uh, we've got a pair of movable legs, so it's not gonna be bat mite. Um, let's see what we can find in here. I'm just looking for an unusual accessory, something that will identify it. That's a base plate again. And that's a jumper plate. Let's give it a shake, see what we can shake down. Okay, we've got um, hair. Almost feels actually like it's gonna be Aquaman again because it's kind of that long hair. Uh, but let's see what else we can find. Oh, now, that is different. Okay, that feels quite a unique element. And as you can see here, it's kind of like a hook. Um, yeah, we've got a, an anti-stud on the end here, and then we've got a kind of hook piece. And I think this is gonna be Stargirl, which is not a character I'm particularly familiar with. Uh, one of the more obscure and rare ones, or not necessarily rare from the series, but um, one that we've not seen before in minifigure form. Let's have a look. Let's see if we can take a look at that hook element. Okay, so we do have, yes, this is definitely gonna be Stargirl. Looks a little bit like Captain America. And yeah, we've got a staff piece there. And where is it? Oh, it's not here, hang on. Must be still inside the bag, there we go. Now this is the element you're gonna be feeling for when you're looking for Stargirl. This is, in fact, let me, let me look at my notes. This is gonna be her cosmic staff. I really don't know much about Stargirl, so um, I do have some notes here. And yeah, really, really easy to feel out in the bag. You've got the anti-stud on the end here, which is gonna go into the, um, the golden post here. And then we've got this very distinctive kind of curved hooked piece, which is in this rather nice orange and uh, shiny glittery color. 
So let's go ahead and get her built and we'll take a closer look. So this is Courtney Elizabeth Whitmore, also known as Stargirl, who appears for the first time as a minifigure. Although she's called Stargirl, she's often referred to as Stars or Star. Stargirl was created by Jeff Johns and Lee Moda and actually has quite a tragic story. Her name, appearance and personality are all a tribute to John's sister Courtney who died in the explosion of TWA Flight 800 in 1996. She comes with an accessory in the form of this cosmic staff which is a really good element to feel out inside the bag. It comes in this fantastic trans orange and glitter colour and has a gold shaft. The torso print suits the character perfectly, we've got this crop top with a large star on the front. We also have a cosmic converter belt covering up some impressive abs and some really nice side printing on the arms with the star pattern. Around the back we have some more printing showing the back of the cosmic converter belt and an impossibly thin waist. Again the legs are using all of LEGO's design tricks. We've got dual moulding, some very crisp side printing and some white printing and flesh tone printing to mask the transition in the legs. The facial printing is really nice with the blue mask and I kind of like the pursed lips. But this has to be my favourite of the two expressions with teeth exposed and is that a metallic silver stripe? It's definitely a first for me to see a Lego minifigure with braces. So Stargirl is definitely not one of the A-list characters from this collection but she is absolutely magnificent. Okay, so we've got another fairly thin package here. You really don't get a lot for $5. Uh, we've got a leaflet there. Uh, that's going to be the jumper plate. And what have we got down here? Oh, that's going to be the dynamic leaping element. There's a pair of uh, flexible lug, flexible legs, not logs. Uh, then we've got a plate for it to stand on. Uh, but we really need something more distinctive. Now, what is this? That is... I think that's just a head. Or is that head inside some hair? I don't know, we'll come back to that. Um, what do we have here? Oh, now that's a bigger element. Okay, so what we've got is something that feels almost like a vase uh, or a vase. Uh, we've got an anti sit at the bottom, we've got a couple of handles on the side, and this is going to be one of the power batteries that comes with either Sinestro or with the Green Lantern. So the really important thing now is do we have hair inside this package? Because if we do, it's gonna be Sinestro, and if we don't, it's gonna be Green Lantern. That's the power battery thing again. Uh, so let's see if we can find that hair. Um, I've got a feeling. I've got a feeling the head might be inside the hair. So, yeah, I'm feeling like a hairpiece, but it's it's blocked off. You can feel the uh, the head inside there where it uh, fits onto the body. So I think we've got the um, the hair connected to the head, which can make things a little bit confusing. But this is definitely going to be Sinestro. Let's take a look inside. Yeah, you can see the Sinestro colours there. And yeah, there you go. That's exactly what I was feeling. So we've got the hair already on the head, which makes this really, really tricky. Fantastic facial expression there. The other thing you're looking for, uh, for Sinestro, is the power battery. It's a different colour to uh, the Green Lantern, uh, but you're not going to know that from the bag. So you want to feel for one of those, and then confirm that it's Sinestro by feeling for this hairpiece, which I can't get out of the head, but that's what you're feeling for. Another one of the slightly less well-known characters from this series is Sinestro. This is not his minifigure debut, he's actually appeared in 76025 Green Lantern vs Sinestro. When trying to feel Sinestro inside a blind bag, beware of this element. Although this looks like a lantern, it's actually a power battery and matches the one that the Green Lantern has. Except this one is yellow of course. He also has this yellow power ring and if you want to you can take it off and attach it to the power battery. It comes with a transparent grip element so it can be held in a minifigure's hand. Sinestro is definitely a very interesting colour. His hands and face are this kind of dark pink. The rest of his costume is mostly blue and black, complete with some metallic silver detail. Again we have dual moulded legs with just a little bit of printing to cover the transition. That printing continues onto the front of the legs, and the blue and black theming continues up onto the torso. The silver metallics really make that belt pop. No dual moulding for the arms, but we do have some printed detail for the cuffs. Moving up the body we get to that fantastic facial expression. He looks so mean with those teeth exposed and that Errol Flynn style moustache. I'm not so sure about the expression around the back though. He looks really freaky with those yellow eyes. The hair element has a somewhat familiar feel to it. It's swept back with a widow's peak at the front and then kind of squared off around the back. 
Compared to some of the other minifigures in this collection, Sinestro is kind of plain. I don't think he's going to make my top 5, but I'm sure to the Green Lantern fans you'll certainly appreciate this guy. This next bag has a little bit more going for it, you can feel it's a little bit thicker, so let's feel inside and see exactly what's causing all of that thickness. Um, then we've got a torso piece, then we've got, yeah this is definitely some kind of hair or headgear, uh, but in fact I can feel like a facial cutout, and then it feels like we've got some ears on top. Um, yeah that is going to narrow it down, let's see what else we can find in here, because there is something, yeah there we go, this is quite a, a big element. Let's get that into the corner so we can have a real good feel. Now, I know exactly what this is. So this is gonna be the, the bag, and this is gonna be carried by uh, Cheetah. Now, you can feel the bag has a handle on. Uh, this is almost like the sack you sometimes see the uh, Father Christmas characters wearing or carrying in the advent calendars. Uh, it's gonna be a green sack with a dollar sign on, very, uh, very comic book. Uh, but yeah, you can feel the handle on the top there. And also there's a hole in the bottom there so you can actually put it onto a stud. So I think, given that we've got the bag and we've also got the headpiece with the ears, in fact, there she is. This is going to be Cheetah, or The Cheetah. I can't remember whether she has a the in the name. But let's have a let's have a look. Yeah, we've definitely got um, yellow in there. Oh, look at that. That is beautiful. Um, I guess you could also be feeling for the tail to confirm this. But the easiest things, I lose the head, I'll get that in a minute. Um, easiest thing to feel for is this little sack here with the dollar sign on. You can feel this part here, which is where the uh, minifigure grabs it. And then you've got a, it's not a hole in the bottom, but well, it is a hole, but not like a perfect stud hole. The other thing you'll find is the piece of headgear. And you can feel out the is on this. I've lost everything. So let's go ahead and build it and we'll take a more detailed look. So this is Cheetah, who is a super villainess and arch enemy of Wonder Woman. She first appeared in Wonder Woman number 6 from autumn 1943. She'll also be making a live action debut in 2020 in the movie Wonder Woman 1984. Her accessory, which you can easily feel out in the bag, could not be any more suited to a comic book character. It's this big chunky bag of swag with a dollar sign on. Printing, as you might expect from a cheetah, consists of a lot of spots. Lego has done a really nice job with this, especially down to the printing on the sides of the tail and on the sides of the leg. We even have printing on the arms and printing all over the headgear. The torso printing is super detailed and shows this really tight catsuit. The printing does continue down onto the legs, but we do get a break in the continuity where we have the tail between the body and the legs. There are some nice details, however, such as the claws on the end of the toes. I also like that facial expression complete with snarling teeth. It looks great and I really like the cheetah headgear. That's actually one of the easier elements to feel out inside the bag. We also have a secondary facial expression which has a particularly sassy look. One thing I've mentioned about these characters before but haven't shown you up to now is the dynamic display element. Each one of these blind bags contains a black jumper plate and a trans clear element. One end of this connects to the jumper plate and the other end to the back of the legs. It means you can either display the minifigures in a non-dynamic pose like this, or in a more artistic pose like this. I'm showing Cheetah running away, but it could easily be Superman taking flight. This is not the first time we've seen the Cheetah in a Lego set. She previously appeared in 76097 Lex Luthor Mech Takedown. But there's no doubt this is a superior minifigure, and it looks amazing. Okay, so there is nothing uh, obviously thick or um, sticking out in this bag. So let's have a feel around, see what we've got. We've got a, a jumper plate with the stud there. They all have those. Uh, then you've got those dynamic elements. Um, we want to take a look at those actually, because we've seen quite a few of those. Got a plate, uh, that's the leaflet, and then, oh, right, okay. Now these are often a giveaway within the blind bags. So what we've got here, is a very distinctive, let me squeeze that, um, we have a square tile. Now only one of these characters has it and this is why it's always good to have a, a printout of all of the characters so you can see what accessories they've got. This is going to be the Superman who is actually representing the, the earliest Superman I think from the comic books. Uh, so slightly different version than we've seen before and we have seen a lot of Superman characters. Uh, we do have an internal bag here. Some of these do have those, and you can generally feel them. Uh, I think they often have these to protect the cape. But let's see what else we've got inside the bag. We've got the uh, instruction booklet, and then we do have the cape. And in fact, there it is. So this is the piece that is going to tell you you've got Superman. In fact, let's just snip that open real quick. 
And uh, yeah, we have a two by two printed tile, uh, which says, let me take a look, uh, Caped Wonder Stuns City. And it's got some color printing on that. That's really cool. Uh, so yeah, we've got ourselves a Superman. Let's uh, build him and take a closer look. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's an old guy wearing tights. And by old guy, I mean no disrespect because Superman first appeared on Action Comics number one in 1938. Even when not taking the form of alter ego Clark Kent, Superman still likes to keep up with the news in the Daily Planet. We've got his 2x2 printed tile which is perfect for feeling out in the bag. I did go away and Google this and I believe it's a headline from one of the newspapers in the original Superman movie. The new trans clear elements work really well with these flying superheroes. You can connect two of them together to get the character into a virtual flying position. Superman's costume is very old school. This is clearly from the era when wearing underwear on the outside of your clothes was not acceptable. The torso print is very crisp and features some ridiculously well-defined muscles. We also have the Superman logo to prevent him being mistaken from other flying heroes. And a very modest amount of printing on the legs, there are no red boots here. The red cape is absolutely perfect and comes in one of these nice soft materials. It hides a little bit of printed detail around the back for the belt and the muscly shoulders. Although this minifigure is based on the 1938 Superman, the facial expression really does remind me of Christopher Reeve in his prime. There's a very stylish hairpiece complete with curl hanging down over the forehead. As well as a nice guy expression, we also have a secondary, more evil expression. I guess this could represent a bad version of Superman, or possibly Superman using his heat ray. As you might imagine, with an iconic DC superhero that's been around for 82 years, there are a number of Superman Lego minifigures, about 14 in total, and even a Duplo version. But even though Superman's been done many, many times before, this simply wouldn't be a DC superheroes collection without the Man of Steel. So what do we got here? We've got a, um, it's actually kind of moderately thick, so let's see if we can find, oh, straight away. Okay, yeah, we've got another power battery, so this is either going to be Sinestro or it is going to be Green Lantern. Now, again, just to recap, uh, I have felt one of these before, uh, but we have, uh, in fact, this element that you see on the front here, uh, it's got a couple of handles around the side and then anti-stun on the bottom. So that tells us we've either got the Green Lantern or Sinestro. Now, the only way we can tell the difference is by feeling for hair. If we don't have hair in here, it's going to be the Green Lantern uh, because I think he just wears a mask. And if it does have hair, it will be Sinestro. So we've got to have a really detailed and methodical feel through the bag. So I'm not yet. Yeah, I've got the base plate and the instructions. Everything else is over here. I've got a torso piece, which I'll push out of the way. Uh, then there's a head. That's the battery piece. Oh, it almost looks like a lantern itself. Um, we do have actually a round stud there, which I think is going to be the power ring. But I'm not feeling any hair in here. And it would be fairly obvious. It's definitely not on the head like uh, Sinestro. So let's open this up. I think this is going to be the Green Lantern. Hopefully this won't be the first failure. Um, but I believe in the system. Let's see what we've got. And we do have, yes, it's the Green Lantern. So yeah, you're going to be feeling for one of these. Um, I want to call it a lantern because it looks like a lantern, but it's a battery. Uh, you also get these round elements in here, which are for the power rings. And then the main thing you're feeling for is the lack of hair. We just have this printed head for the Green Lantern. Let's get that on his body and take a more detailed look. So here we have Green Lantern, who has very similar accessories to Sinestro. As a reminder, when you're feeling for the Green Lantern, feel for the bag without the hair. Predictably for Green Lantern, we have a green power battery and also a green power ring, which can be connected to the minifigure's hand or snapped to the front of the battery. Lego is making good use of dual molding with black and green legs and an unusual combination of dark tan and black for the arms. These also include some green detailing on the shoulders and black gloves. As you might expect, he's dressed to impress in his Green Lantern Corps uniform. Look a little bit closer and he really does look like a Mexican wrestler. Those dual molded legs come in really handy for the green boots. This leaves a small amount of printing to hide the transition between the two colours. The torso print features the Green Lantern logo and of course lots of muscles. The printing is more discreet around the back but notice that we do have some printing on the back of the head. I like the continuity of the yellow stripes onto the back of the uniform. And then of course we have the facial print on the front of the head. You can't tell me this isn't a Mexican wrestler's mask. 
The print's okay, but it does look a little bit washed out on the black background. This seems to be a regular problem with black minifigure heads. As my Green Lantern knowledge consists of only what I read on Wikipedia before I started the video, I'll probably quit while I'm ahead. I don't really have any great affinity for this character, and I don't think he's going to be one of my favourites from this series. If you're a Green Lantern nut, I'm sure your experience may differ. Well, after another run of duplicates, which I won't include in the video, I'm hoping to find something new in here. and see what we can find. So, um, what is that? Um, that is... You know what, I don't know. Um, it's it's a small element. It might be one of... Oh, in fact... Oh, there we go. So, yeah, so what we've got is uh, we've got two studs which are connected by a chain. And actually, if you grab that and give it a shake, you can kind of get the chain to uh, extend. Now, the chain is a short chain, which um, means that it can be really only one character. I mean, Mr... Mr. Miracle has a long chain which he wraps around him because he's an escapologist. And then we've got Cyborg with a short chain um, in a new colour indeed. And um, let's have another feel around just to make sure we can confirm this. So, okay, there's the headgear. Yeah, so what we're looking for is uh, some kind of mask. I believe, half, in fact, you can see Cyborg on the front here. Uh, it kind of comes down halfway over his face. And yes, you can feel that. Yeah, there's kind of like a half and half mask there. So yeah, this is definitely gonna be Cyborg. Uh, let's open this up and see if we can confirm. So we should see a purple chain this time, which I believe is a new color. And yes, there it is. So yeah, this is probably the easiest thing to feel for in the bag. Uh, you're getting a short purple chain. Don't confuse that with Mr. Miracle, which has a much longer length of chain. And uh, we do actually get two of those. That's very cool. So we're getting a spare, I believe. And then the other thing you'll use to confirm the identity is this mask. And the mask is half and half. So half of it goes down over the face and half of it doesn't. Um, we'll take a closer look at that when we've built the minifig. So here we have DC's answer to the six million dollar man. It's Cyborg. He's appeared in minifigure form about three times before, and thanks to a tragic high school accident, he's mostly machine. Given that my Lego knowledge is probably better than my comic book knowledge, I've no idea why he's holding a purple chain. What I can say is that this purple chain is a brand new colour, we've never had a purple one before. Go Lego! The chain that comes with Cyborg is considerably shorter than the one that comes with Mr. Miracle. This is definitely a big help when feeling out the blind bags. Sitting somewhere between a Borg and a Cyberman, the printing on this minifigure is certainly impressive. The legs are made out of metallic silver plastic and lack dual moulding, but do have some really nice side printing. I really like the way the printing wraps seamlessly from the front to the side of the minifigure. Apart from the fact that Cyborg isn't wearing any trousers, you can see the bionic attachments to his legs. These and many other details on the legs and torso are printed on with metallic silver. It really gives him quite a dynamic look. Following a very consistent theme within the series, we have a very impressive set of abs, and he also has dual molded arms. Like the torso, these look very impressive with the overlaid metallic details. More metallics pick out the details on the back of the torso, including some kind of utility belt. And then we have that custom piece of headgear, complete with Cyborg's infrared eye on the left, and his human eye on the right. When you lift this off, you can see we have continuity with the printing on the outside. The helmet is a really nice Lego element. It's made out of silver and black dual molded plastic. On the right hand side we have exposed Victor Stone's hair. And then on the left hand side we have more of the cyborg components including I guess some kind of hearing module here. Now the mask continues down over the full length of the face and has a little cut out there for the mouth. It's very cool. So there you have it, that's Victor Stone aka Cyborg and definitely one of the best printed minifigures I've seen so far. Okay, so we got another slightly thicker package, so we uh, should find something interesting in here. Actually, there's quite a lot of uh, air inside this bag, and it does feel like there's an inner bag as well. Sometimes you feel like kind of second crinkly bag inside. Uh, so let's have a feel around and see what we can find. Um, that. What is that? That is a, a stud. Oh, right, okay. Well, I think I know what that means. Um, so there are a couple of chains in a couple of these characters, namely uh, Mr. Miracle and Cyborg. And then there is a piece of string which is connected by two studs. And it has convenient places where you can grip onto a minifigure's hand. Uh, it feels like one of those, so I think I know who it is. But I'm going to feel around a little bit more to confirm. Um, that's a jumper plate. And then we've got a big piece here. Big, big piece. So this is a piece of headgear. 
And in fact, I can probably show you it through the bag. Um, what we've got is a large pair of ears. So this is going to be the classic original Batman uh, from the original comic. I think we're trying to recreate the very oldest version. I shake this down so we don't cut Batman's cape or anything ridiculous. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, we've got a, a piece of string in here with some minifigure grips and also a very large cowl element with uh, very much bigger ears than you would usually associate with Batman. So let's pull this out. Okay, here's what we've got. So this is the, um, the cowl, the piece of headgear. As you'll see, it's got very long, pointy, sharp ears. Uh, also in here, which you might feel out, is you've got a Batarang in this exclusive blue color. Uh, but let's also look inside the bag. We've got the instruction booklet. But this is a very easy to feel out element. So we've got this long piece of string. It's got two studs at the end. And then on each, um, well, we've got a number of links on here. And these are to snap into the minifigure's hand so he can kind of you know, fly through. <laughs> can't say it so he can fly between buildings and that sort of thing uh, but yeah really really easy to find this classic batman uh, feel for the ears feel for the batarangs and definitely definitely feel for this so here we have one of the most recognizable characters from the series this is batman or should i say old man because he's just turned 80. one of the first things you'll notice is the very long ears on the cowl this is synonymous with the original batman as first featured in detective comics number 27. You'll also notice that the Bat logo has changed quite a lot over the years. Accessories include this Batarang which appears for the first time in blue, and a rather long piece of string with studs on each end and minifigure hand grips. This is great for feeling out in the bag, just don't confuse it with Mr Miracle's chain. The legs are dual moulded, but they're dual moulded in just the perfect position to represent Batman's boots. He has the same curious habit of wearing underwear over tights as do many other characters. The utility belt is very nicely printed and I like the tones of yellow and orange to give it depth. As far as the purple hands, I'm just going to have to assume that's the right colour. The torso print shows off not only the bat symbol, but also Batman's impressive abs. That attention to detail is continued with the printing on the back of the minifigure. The cape has the scalloped edge you'd expect to see with Batman and is made out of a nice soft material. Not that you'll really want to remove the cowl, but the facial print underneath is pretty good. In particular, I really do like the goggles which put the eyes in just the right place for the cowl. So there you have the 1939 aesthetic Batman, probably one of my favourite minifigures from the collection so far. So let's see what we've got inside this one. Um, we've got a base plate, we've got the instruction booklet. It's actually really thin, this. Um, let's see what we can find inside. Uh, Oh, right. Uh, yeah, I know what that is. Okay, so there is a really distinctive element in here, and this is going to be a crossbow. And that will mean the Huntress, because only the Huntress holds a crossbow. Uh, what else could we feel for in here? Oh, yeah, there we go. Uh, so we've got the Huntress's uh, hair, which is long, black, flowing hair. So you can definitely feel like it's very rigid. Um, it kind of flops down the sides a little bit. Uh, but, yeah, we've got the, uh, the crossbow in there. So this is definitely going to be the Huntress, uh, which is another one of these characters I'm not particularly familiar with. I'm not exactly... Not exactly a comic book geek. Uh, I'm just checking, I'm not cutting through anything there. Uh, I think it's the top of the internal bag. Um, yeah, a little bit of a uh, little bit of plastic there. And uh, yeah, so this is the Huntress. Uh, so you're going to be feeling for this hair. Um, a lot of these minifigures have hair because super superheroes are really vain about their hair. Uh, you can actually also feel for these utility belts. Um, Batman doesn't have one of those, it's printed on. And it looks like we've got a couple of them. Uh, but this is the key element you're looking for. You're looking for that crossbow. So this is Huntress, who is a new character to me, but apparently first appeared in DC Comics in 1977. She comes with a single accessory in the form of this dark pearlescent grey crossbow. She also wears a rather nice purple utility belt, which does look like an exclusive element. Except in reality, Catwoman beat her to it. Like many of these DC minifigures, we do have dual moulded legs, and that means we only need a small amount of printed detail on the front to hide that transition. The printing on the front of the minifigure is really crisp, and seems to pick out the detail of the really tight bodysuit that Huntress has been virtually poured into. The arms have some purple detailing to complement the suit, and then around the back we have some more printing to show off the toned body of the Huntress. She's wearing a slimline black cape made out of the softer material and has fantastically detailed hair. 
the face is loosely disguised with a purple mask, and then we have an alternate, much more aggressive expression. Huntress may not have a list superhero status yet, but this does mean it's the first time we've seen her in minifigure form. Like any DC superhero, it's a matter of time before she gets her own movie. On to another bag, and let's see what joy we've got inside this one. Um, straight away we've got a head, which I'm pretty much sure all of these have. Um, that's a torso piece, let's just feel for the hands, because uh, actually if you're feeling for Aquaman, one of his hands is a, um, uh, a harpoon. Uh, so that does feel different. We've got a jumper plate, we've got some of those dynamic things. Um, I want to actually show you one of those. Let's, uh, let's get this bag open first. We've got a, a plate there, which is the base plate. So I'm feeling for something something unique, anything really. Um, that is, that's another dynamic jumpy thing. The legs. What have we got? So that's a torso. Ah, oh, that, that feels different. Okay, so what we've got here is something that feels a little bit like a gauntlet, almost like uh, Thanos' gauntlet. And yeah, you can feel there's, um, there's a little post inside it, which is how it grips to the minifigure's hands. This is gonna be Metamorpho, which is another one of the, uh, the really obscure DC comic heroes. Um, let's have a look. So what I'm looking for, yeah, you can see inside the bag there, we have this, this hand piece. And that is a, a kind of gauntlet. It actually fits onto the minifigure's hand using this post here. So you can feel the gauntlet. You can actually feel the bumps through the outside of the bag. And then you've got this post underneath. Other than that, it's a pretty standard minifigure. This is Rex Mason, AKA Metamorpho, and sometimes referred to as the Element Man. No, the Element Man, not the Elephant Man. He's been around since 1965, but this is definitely my first experience. I've got to be honest, this looks like a minifigure I would find in a bulk lot on Facebook Marketplace. You know, one of those crazy minifigures that kids put together out of all different parts. We don't have much in the way of accessories, but there is this giant fist which clips into the minifigure's hand. It's unusual to see mismatched legs, and even more unusual to see a trans clear leg on Metamorpho's left. The clear leg is printed on the front and the side, and makes it look like it's made out of ice. The other side is also meticulously printed and looks like it's made out of mud. But one feature I really do like is the printing across the waistband for Metamorpho's belt. Often LEGO doesn't bother to print that bit and sometimes we lose continuity. I'm really not sure what's going on with the torso print. On the right it looks like we've got exposed muscles. And then on the left he's got like fish scales or something. Those printed details are also repeated around the back and onto the minifigure's arms. I'm honestly not sure what Metamorpho is meant to look like, so I'm just going to have to assume this is good. Certainly the quality of printing onto the white head is excellent. One thing I definitely can say about this DC Superheroes minifigure set is that this is a journey of discovery. Certainly for me, not being a comic book geek, I'm finding out about characters I've never even heard of before. Okay, so on to the next bag, and this one does have a, a bit of a thick element in there. Let's have a look at that first, and yeah. I know exactly who this is. This one is really super easy to uh, feel out. In fact, if you take a look at that guy there with the green hair, that is the Joker, and you'll see he's carrying a large piece of candy floss. And that is one of these uh, kind of beehive elements. Uh, you can feel it, hang on. Yeah, it's got ridges in it. Uh, it's got kind of round um, concentric circles. Really distinctive element. Um, honestly, we don't need to go any further than that, but you could feel for also the uh, the little post that sticks inside it. But this is definitely gonna be number 13, the Joker. And I believe this is gonna be an awesome minifigure. So let's take a look. Okay, oh, no, there we go. Hang on. Ah, right, now that's also interesting. So um, in fact, where is the Joker's head? Because that isn't it. We must have. In fact, where is the Joker's head? Oh, there! Oh, look, look, look! The uh, the head is inside the beehive element. So this is super easy to find. Uh, but with these beehive elements, you're going to get um, a, like a blank minifigure head that goes inside it, and the. Joker's head is actually up inside the uh, the thing, so I'm gonna have to try and get that out. Um, but yeah, definitely feel for this big beehive element, and then you could also feel for two minifigure heads, but just be aware that one of them may get inside the beehive. So here we have the archetypal Batman villain, the Joker. I thought he might be sick, but apparently he's all white. 
There are at least 20 previous Joker minifigures, plus a Duplo version and a micro figure. But this version looks amazing in a pristine white suit. For reasons unbeknownst to me, the Joker is carrying a large candy floss, or as it's known in America, cotton candy. It's an upside down beehive element in this rather fetching pink colour. And to give the domed appearance on top, we have a minifigure head shoved inside. If the candy floss element isn't easy enough to feel out, you can also feel out the 1x2 printed tile. This is the Joker's calling card and shows a pair of Jokers on the front. But the really neat thing is that each one of those Jokers is holding another card which shows a pair of Batman. Joker's costume is elegantly understated and consists of an elegant white suit. There's a very small amount of printing on the pants which shows the overlap with the suit jacket. Beyond that we have a fashionable single breasted suit jacket in white with the top button fastened. There's also a lilac shirt and a white tie to match the suit. There is a small amount of printing around the back which just shows the creases in the jacket. But of course the highlight of this minifigure is the Joker's face and that pale green hair. It's a very sinister look and I really like it. The hair element is really cool and shows the receding hairline of the Joker. We also have cutouts around the side giving the appearance of ears and some impressive green sideburns. The only real disappointing thing about this minifigure is the lack of a secondary expression. I was really expecting to find something good back here. I still can't quite figure out why he's holding the cotton candy. Maybe it's a reference to the 1960s TV show where the Joker's hideout was a funhouse in an abandoned funfair. One thing's for sure, it is great to get an exclusive version of this iconic character. And on to the next minifigure blind bag of joy. Let's see what we've got in here. We have a round element, that's a minifigure head. Uh, that's a leaflet. Um, we've got a torso piece and it does have two hands. Um, so it cannot be Aquaman. That's the base plate. Uh, those are legs, they move so it can't be Batmite. Let's see what else we can find in here. Okay, yeah. Oh, this is Bumblebee. Yeah, so what we've got here, um, we've definitely seen these elements before. We've got like wings that clip onto the back of the minifigure and they are rigid plastic. Uh, you can definitely feel it's quite a hard element. And it's also got a, um, I guess you call some kind of bracket on the back there so it fits between the minifigure's head and the body. So we have this pair of wings which can only mean that this is Bumblebee. Um, I believe she was one of the uh, the first black DC minifigure, uh, not DC minifigure, but DC comic book characters. Um, let's have a look. And yes, yeah, there we go. So we have the bumblebee wings, uh, a little bit uh, translucent there, so it may be difficult to see, but these are what you want to be feeling out for in the bag. You could also be feeling out for the hair piece, which has got these kind of buns on top. That's a really nice element. And we also have these, um, these energy blast things. These are a little bit more difficult to feel, uh, but the, yeah, the key element here is the wings. Another character appearing for the first time as a minifigure is Bumblebee. Bumblebee is an alter ego for Karen Beecher Duncan, who first appeared in Teen Titans number 45 in December 1976. One of her superpowers is having the ability to shoot energy blasts. These are recreated here using a familiar Lego element, but I do believe this is a new colour. As you'd expect with a Bumblebee minifigure, the costume is yellow and black. Nothing special down here, just a pair of normal black legs. But we do have some metallic gold printing on the arms for these metallic wristbands. The torso printing is pretty basic, showing that bumblebee pattern. The only thing I don't like here is the exposed navel. Notice that the skin tone is a completely different colour to the arms and face. Speaking of the face, I really do like this facial print. We've got a kind of sassy smile and then those oversized yellow spectacles. They really help to give bumblebee an insectoid-like appearance. Another thing I really like is the hair element. As you can see, it's parted at the back and then we've got two buns up on top. In fact, is that a hidden Mickey? With the wings removed, you can see some interesting printing on the back of the torso. I'm not entirely sure what these details are meant to represent, but maybe they show where the wings attach to the body. If that's the case, I just pulled off Bumblebee's wings and that makes me a very bad person. The wing element isn't entirely new, but it does provide something real easy to feel out inside the bag. The same goes for that haircut. What is unique to Bumblebee is the translucent material and the printing. As well as a sassy smile, we also have a secondary expression which shows that Bumblebee means business, or business if you excuse the pun. Bumblebee is definitely one of the more obscure characters from this collection, but she is a great minifigure and introduces some fantastic new colourways for the energy blast and the wing elements. 
Okay, so what have we got here? Now, I do apologise if you're wearing headphones, and I understand that the crinkly bags probably drive you crazy, uh, but uh, we have to find the character. And actually, straight away, in the corner here, we have a round element. So, yeah, immediately I know this is going to be the Flash. In fact, the Flash wears a kind of World War One, World War Two tin helmet, and it's got lightning bolts coming out of the top there. So, first you're going to notice it's a round element, which is uh, pretty unusual in this series, and it's got some lightning bolts on top. Let's see what else we can find in here. There should be some other things that confirm it, and in particular, there we go. So we have these kind of. Um, I guess bursts of energy that come out from behind the Flash as he's running along. So yeah, this is definitely going to be the Flash. And let's open it up and show you exactly what I was feeling for. Um, so the key thing you want to feel for, oh, in fact, um, yeah, so these are the uh, the lightning elements that kind of stick out behind him. I've actually got three of those, uh, so we've got a spare. But the key thing you're looking for is the helmet. Let's take a look at that. Uh, so this is a round element. You'll feel this inside the bag. It's dual molded. We've got um, kind of pearl gold and pearl silver. And then it's got these uh, kind of wings on the top here. So it almost look like lightning elements, but I guess these are going to be uh, wings for the flash. Another particularly old character from this collection is Jay Garrick, AKA the Flash. He turns 80 this year and first appeared in Flash Comics number one in 1940. The Flash is the fastest man alive and has a mysterious power known as the Speed Force. Representing that, you can see we've got a couple of lightning bolts sticking out of his back. These do stick out a very long way and will make this character tricky to display, especially if you want to put him in a frame. The costume is predominantly blue and red and uses dual molded legs with a printed gold wing on the side. Some more printing around the front picks out the top of the boot and we also have a black belt complete with metallic silver belt buckle. The torso printing is particularly interesting and shows a folded over jacket, almost like the one that a chef would wear, complete with a metallic gold lightning bolt. Printing around the back just picks out the folds of the jacket and then you can see the bracket to which the lightning bolts attach. Only one facial expression this time, but it is a great one showing the Flash smiling with teeth exposed. The really cool thing, however, is the hat. It's a pearlescent silver World War II style hat complete with pearlescent gold wings. These look particularly good because the helmet is dual molded from the two different colours of plastic. Although we've seen the Flash about five times before as a minifigure and also as a mini doll, this is definitely one of the classic characters and a very welcome addition to the series. So here we go with yet another crinkly bag and let's see what we can find in here. Uh, oh. It's just, uh, we've got an inner bag and I can feel the elements kind of jumping around trying to get away from me. Um, we have a torso piece. Yeah, two hands so it's not Aquaman. Uh, that's the instruction booklet, that's the base plate. What else have we got here? Uh, what's that? Um, oh, oh, oh right, I know who this is. Um, so we have a pair of short legs. You can feel the uh, two studs on the top there. Uh, you can feel the feet and these do not move. So this means it must be a child and there is only one child inside the DC minifigure series. Um, it is going to be Batmite. Um, let's also have a feel around because he should have a cowl um, if that's the case. And there we go. Yeah, so we've got a kind of helmet piece here, headpiece, and it has the little ears on top. Yeah, this is definitely going to be Batmite. As soon as you feel those little legs, you will know that it's Batmite. And um, again, not a character I'm familiar with. Um, I'm not really a comic book guy, uh, but oh, this is super cool. So yeah, you want to be feeling for these tiny little legs. That will tell you immediately that this is Batmite. Now, the other thing I didn't feel inside, but is super exciting for this minifigure is this 2x3 printed tile. You will feel like he's the only one with a 2x3 printed tile and this is Detective Comics uh, number 27 which is the first time that Batman ever appeared in a comic book, uh, which I believe was 80 years ago this year. Um, this year being 2020 as I film this, it is the, uh, the 1st of January 2020. Um, and yeah, we've got a little cape in there. Yeah, that is the, uh, the little Batmite. Let's get him together and take a closer look. So as we reach number 16 in the DC Superheroes minifigure collection, we have yet another first. I'd never heard of this little guy, but I absolutely love him. This is Batmite, who was apparently introduced in 1959. Batmite has this absolutely stunning 2x3 printed tile, which makes him really easy to feel out in the bag. 
This is Detective Comics number 27 from May 1939 and represents the first appearance of Batman. It's a perfect recreation of the iconic comic book except the characters have been replaced by minifigures. As you might have guessed, Batmite idolises Batman and even created his own suit. He's the only character with short legs which makes him really easy to feel out inside the bag. These are dual moulded from blue and grey plastic. The torso print is absolutely adorable with the handmade bat symbol stitched on. We also have a rather interesting utility belt which looks a couple of sizes too big. No bulging muscles around the back of this minifigure's costume. Instead you can see the creases where the costume's slightly too big for him. He also has a rather nice scalloped cape in blue and a lop-eared cowl which really shows off that goofy smile. Underneath we have a printed expression showing a bat mask and a pair of enormous eyes. Even though Batmite is a completely unfamiliar character, I really love this, he's a standout from the collection. Now that we've finally found all 16 characters, I guess we should take a look at them all together. So finally, here are all 16 of the LEGO DC Superhero minifigure collectibles. Mr. Miracle, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Stargirl, Sinestro, Cheetah, Superman, Green Lantern, Cyborg, Batman, Huntress, Metamorpho, the Joker, Bumblebee, The Flash, and finally Batmite. When I first learned that we were getting some DC superhero minifigures, I honestly wasn't that excited. But now that I've had a chance to spend some time with these, I do actually quite like the collection. Some of the characters are a bit meh, but others are fantastic. These are probably my most favourite from the collection, but let's break it down into a top five. In fifth place is Batman's arch enemy, the Joker. Coming up next in 4th position is Wonder Woman with her lasso of truth. In 3rd place and really rocking this dynamic pose is Batman. With outstanding printing, a great colour scheme and that goofy expression, in 2nd place it's Mr Miracle. But my absolute favourite just has to be Batmite. This guy is so unique, he's got a great accessory with that comic book and just look at that face, it's awesome. But do you agree with my top 5 or were there other characters that appeal to you more? As always I'd love to hear what you think of this DC Superheroes minifigure collection in the comment section below. I do read all of the comments and I reply to as many as I possibly can. Above all I really hope you enjoyed this LEGO DC Superheroes minifigure blind bag field guide and review video. If you did a thumbs up is always appreciated and don't forget to subscribe for more awesome LEGO content. If you need a recap on how to feel out any of these characters, don't forget to check the video description and you'll find a list of all of the timestamps. Thanks a million for checking out today's video, I'll be back soon with some more Harry Potter goodness, so in the meantime stay safe and we'll see you on the next build video.